Cool. Um, one of the things that I've kind of wondered, because like I've, I've known you're playing for a lot of years, and I, one of the things I always really appreciated about the way that you played is how you navigated moving between like time-based playing and texture-based playing. And specifically, like, in quieter dynamics, so here we're, I mean, I've heard you do it in all sorts of dynamics, but, like, moving between time and texture, um, it, like, how do you think about that? How do you approach that? Like, what are your... I suppose that de depends on the context, really. Um, but, yeah, I, I've spent a lot of time thinking about, obviously, time as a spectrum where you're in time and you're out of time, but and then there's, there's, a, there's a point in which you're... You, what you're playing might not sound in, might not seem in time, but it it is like you, it's up to you. If you if you're saying you're playing in time, then then you are. Um, so there's a there's a point at which you break time, hmm. but that point can move, and you can disguise that, and um, you know you can apparently break time, but actually you're still you're still in time in your head. But like approaching it from the opposite um, uh, side, you can be playing free, but you can very clearly be like what you're playing sounds free, but you can very clearly be um, uh, uh, like centered. Like in, in play, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, and I, I enjoy to just like play around in in that bit. Um, but I suppose that's what I mean by the context. If I'm playing like a, a jazz gig, then of course the, the default is time. Or, or maybe that um, window just kind of overall shifts over or... Well, it does. I mean, uh, but so, yeah, but I mean, it's, it depends what, uh, um, what, what the gig is. So if it's one of my groups, which mm. would be come more from the jazz um, uh, uh, background we sort of start there but I mean you know I'm playing with Mark Hanslip and Seth Bennett you know, both free improv musicians mm. Graham Seth and both free improv all free improv, improv musicians so we're very comfortable going between them but we sort of start there but this is one thing that I do with Seth a lot where we, um, we're playing in in time but then we can really stretch that you know you stretch in each beat but to the point of breaking um, and I really enjoy that like how far can you stretch it before you break it mm. um, I use the idea of a, of a flam a flam being like blah yeah you know two very quick hits but you can make that flam wider and but like how wide can you make it and and I think the answer is very wide <laughs> like if, if you if you if you say these two beats are a flam you know if that's how you're feeling it um, even you know they could be they could be seconds apart, but I still see that as a flam. Yeah, yeah. So so that idea of like where where does it break? Where does time break down into free? And I think the answer is just down to where do you want it to break? Hmm. So if if the intention is that actually you no know, this flam is like really wide to the point where I'm putting stuff in between the two yeah. beats, <laughs> but like they they still to me are part of the same. Yeah, yeah. Flam, hmm. so so, I mean, yeah, that that. So just then, when we were playing in tempo, it was almost like hmm. you uh, <laughs> designed that. <laughs> um, but so so so, I I didn't necessarily just like lock in straight yeah, yeah. away, and and then even when I did, I'd like start pulling it around. But I'm still hearing your your time, your tempo, yeah, and. Yeah. and and, but then I'm feeling everything that I, or I'm choosing to feel everything that I play, every hit, to be in relation to what you're playing. But um, whether I'm actually playing in time or not, I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it's sort of... I mean, it, it, there's like gradations, because like, I guess there's like in time and not in time, but those are a kind of relative to a, a point. So for example, yeah. if you're playing swing, mm -hmm. the swing is not in time, because it's kind of like, the, right, but yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. it's consistent. Like the mm -hmm. grid is is to a thing and everybody agrees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you can have a really hard swing or a soft swing and like the that everybody kind of moves that grid together and adheres to it. Mm -hmm. So like you could be, if everybody's swinging no, and nobody's doing any funny business, nobody's in time but they're all they're all like together. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, all together yeah, yeah so you yeah. can kind of like um 
like moving out of time, I guess, in the way that you're saying is to rub against whatever the grid happens to be. Right, right, right. But but then I also find, um, I mean, I, I guess you'd need a sympathetic uh, bass player or sympathetic musicians, but yeah. also find... Yeah, they're, they're musicians as well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but, um, but this idea of like playing against, so it's something that I yeah, yeah. found with um, like playing with Seth and... We would like just we, we, like in a in in a free free improv trio, um, but Seth and I will often go into free jazz or just you know like a swing swinging, mm. or whatever. But then we would we would just swing at very different tempos, not relate, not like a cross rhythm, mm. but they're just unrelated. They're just different, mm. and it feels to me that it swings harder. So even though we're not like in time with each other. Like it's it still locks together in a you know strange way, like not in a metronomic way, but just in a in a groove way, in a, yeah, in, yeah. A, in a feel way. So so that idea of rubbing against a, 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 um, the time, I guess it's just down to intention, isn't it? I mean, yeah. this is why I said you might need sympathetic musicians. Like if depending on the context, if I'm on a on a gig playing, you know, Bye Bye Blackbirds. Um, with a bunch of um, straight ahead bebop musicians, and then I start doing this, they're gonna look at me and think, oh, "Come on!" What, like, <laughs> but if if they if they just accept that, okay, you know that's fine. He's do, he's doing his thing. <laughs> he's doing that thing, and they're okay with that. Then then I, it doesn't seem like it's rubbing against yeah. anymore. And yeah, this idea of it being, um, I think what you were saying about like the the swing. Being not metronomic yeah, yeah. and 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 where you place the swing can, I think that might be where th this came from for me. This idea of like, well, hold on, but they're they're all in, they're all playing in time. They're all locking together, but there's this movement there. So how far can you stretch that? So hmm. Maybe that's where it came from yeah. for me. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I like that idea quite a lot, and I think there's something about role in there as well. Like typically in like a conventional context, like as a drummer. Yeah. You, you sort of keep time as kind of like almost your central role and mm. then you put a little fiddle faddle here and there just to accentuate the structure but like the expectation is that like you're the metronome mm -hmm. in some musics you yeah. know what I mean and I think there's like a, a very I don't know if it's super contemporary but like this idea where that's not the case even like this of like with your example with Seth where you're both playing at different tempos mm. but that can aggregate make a solid groove mm -hmm. and I think it comes back to like what you're saying of intention like the None of you is responsible for keeping the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But both of you doing that thing produces the time mm -hmm, mm -hmm. as a, an aggregate. It isn't a singular entity that somebody needs to manage, but the perception of time and how time is moving and how time relates to each other between musicians is made up there. Mm -hmm. It's being supported and quite intentionally to create a specific sound, mm -hmm. which maybe like you starting a tempo like that may not necessarily have that that intention in mind, but the the mega mind of multiple musicians yeah, playing yeah, together yeah, 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 yeah. can kind of move in, in a way outside of that. Mm. Um, which is, yeah, I really like the idea a lot. And I like the, the, like your perspective of, you know, cause I, I know you like, you play a lot of jazz and like mm. you play a lot of time based music. Mm -hmm. Um, so hearing like that perspective of uh, like how fluid that is, even in like a, a bebop ish context, mm. bebop, Bebop, be bop. I said beep bop. I think a bebop context. <laughs> um, yeah, and and I guess maybe a little back to my first kind of question because one thing that that potentially blurs this a little bit more is the the idea of like a lot of things with drums and with sticks in particular. Like we have clear attacks and clear onsets. Yeah, it's like a singular yeah, moment. Yeah. Brushes obviously get real mushy friction gets mushy like there's a lot of things that like where the attack becomes blurred mm. um how does how does how does this relate to that or is it yeah i mean that's another thing that has um I, i've spent a long time trying to get and i i think for me it comes from elvin jones this idea of like it's just a big sound and things obviously elvin swings mm. like like anything but he's just got this one sound um um and so, that, like, I'm, I'm, yeah, like, it's not necessarily removing attack, but just, um, uh, um, 
removing the importance of the attack, I guess, but it's in a freer context, certainly. Um, what I'm trying to achieve is just a, 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 an overall sound, um, so there's not like a, a definite... I mean, obviously, there's a lot of the stuff that I was doing... Like, yeah. that's obviously got a lot of attack, <laughs> but uh, ho hopefully in a way that it's not... Like, it's... It, it's not serving in the same way that it would in in a in a context in time, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. It's not like, yeah, I'm not giving anyone any sort of beat mm. or any sort of pulse or you know any sort of indication. It's just like a, a, a another part of the whole sound. Yeah. Um, was that what you? Oh, that was uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think it was around the idea of like texture and moving yeah. in and out of like time and texture and yeah, like yeah, yeah. If, thinking of maybe going back to your metaphor of having a continuum of like between time and out of time, mm. of having maybe either an additional axis or like something maybe off at an angle mm. where there is like um, onset and texture, mm -hmm. and then in there you have a continuum between like you know like a stick, a brush or a brush rubbing or right, yeah, 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 you know like yeah. cymbal squeals or whatever yeah. but then there's a lot i do as well with a stick to to disguise the the attack and mm. to, to smooth off the attack um you know just like a, a little press rather, yeah, you yeah. Know, um, the main use of that is if i'm not sure when i'm playing in time if i'm not <laughs> sure exactly where it is and i'm just like frudunk. yeah it was somewhere in there <laughs> the, the shy hit yeah <laughs> but yeah. even with that there's like um there's a like an, an intentionality of sound, and I, I find this. I think with, with you can hear this with every instrument, but I think with drums, like a drummer who has really good stick control, and I don't mean like technical stick mm. control. I mean as in like has command, like the the attack, like a, a backbeat snare mm. versus like a ghost note snare. Mm. Obviously, they're very different dynamics, but even if we equalize the dynamic, there's a different sound and character. Yeah, attack, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. And you hear it like a pianist and you know and a string yeah. player, but I, I think with drums, like. I remember when I used to teach at a, like a music school, like one of the drum teachers, like it was instantly obvious at the moment he was on the, on the kit, like just from the other room, you would hear the sound and be like, uh -huh, oh, right. oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Versus like, the students are in there and they're, you know, they're really going for it. But like, it was like immediate and it's the same scenario. It's probably yeah. the same sticks even, yeah. but there's like a, a sort of a, a kind of a thing, which I think as, as a drummer, you can, you can, you have control over that as well. You can, you can play a single snare note that is a backbeat. Yeah, in the middle yeah, yeah, of nowhere, yeah. you know what I mean, yeah. or uh, any of these kind of things. I I thought of this. Um, maybe this isn't quite the same thing, but this certainly does relate back to the the idea of playing in and out of time. Um, thinking of the beats, the, thinking of the strokes as upbeats or downbeats, like mm. regardless of what it what you know whether there is time or not. But it f obviously feels very different to 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 play an upbeat. Than it does to play a downbeat. One's got like a lift and an anticipation. One's got this sort of weight and resolution. Um, and I have tried this with people, with pu pupils before, like um, uh, seeing if they can tell right. <laughs> whether I'm playing an upbeat or a downbeat. And you know, I'm just playing one stroke and nothing mm. else. One stroke and nothing else. And more often than not, they can actually feel and hear a difference. Maybe that it's also my body language. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but, but, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but, but they, they feel very different. Um, and so uh, that, that sort of control of, um, you were talking about it in terms of the drum and how you hit, is the stroke yeah, yeah. of the drum. But um, yeah, I, I guess it's a similar sort of feel. I don't mm. know, if you're, if you're thinking, again, it comes back to the intention uh, what you're wanting to play if, it, if, mm. if you if you say this is if you feel that this is an upbeat then it is an upbeat uh, yeah absolutely regardless of what but um yeah maybe that's not quite the same as what you would i mean it's, it's the same domain though in, in terms of yeah yes yeah <laughs> good um, but the, another uh thing i just re remembered about so when i was younger playing in a band with anton um our high school avant-garde rock band um, I did start to play with this because it was we got into free improv with that group um, and um, but before that we was like you know experimental rock grooves for 15 minutes but I, I started using this idea of playing 
out of time over the top of it and then just trying to come back in at, you know mm. at the top of the riff or whatever but like deliberately playing stuff that's just you know not in tempo and so I guess that that sort of started there and, and this is another thing that I then continued with Seth um, um, a lot we do this a lot where you sort of play in but what's great with doing it with Seth is that he he clocks what I'm doing he knows when I'm doing this and then he will just like hang around and so we can both hit the downbeat at the same mm. time even though the, the, you know whatever yeah, the yeah. downbeat might be um, but so so we're able to to do that but that's that's like another way of breaking or, or stretching the not stretching but um, blurring the gap between whether it's in tempo or not in tempo, but yeah. yeah. But I don't know. To, to me, do you find this as well? Like, if you're playing stuff in tempo, um, and you want to play something that's like out of tempo or against the tempo, you can play something that's completely free of meter whilst the rest of it's going on, but it still feels very much in tempo to you. But uh, do do you find find this where you like, you're it's basically just a choice. You can choose to play something that sounds in tempo, and if you were to notate it, probably it is in tempo, but the way that you're feeling it and experiencing it is out of tempo and, yeah, and yeah. free, um, and then vice versa. Yeah, well. yeah, I mean, that, that's a common, and that's something that I think I, I inherited from piano stuff, like there's a lot, a lot of romantic stuff in, a right, lot right, of right, right, stuff right. from romantic literature like Chopin or something, mm. where it's super common where you have like, a figure in four or six and then there's like a 27 note right, run okay, yeah. that like very early is super hard to coordinate because like yeah. th these don't line up in any sensible right, way at all yeah, but at yeah. some point you kind of get the feel of one thing is consistent and the other one is in this case also consistent but at a really unrelated rate and that kind of learning how to do that mm. and then being able to feel comfortable with that for me translated kind of okay to the drums and that like with the drums it's very common you have limb independence anyways is mm. something we work on is like the rhythm independence as well so there could yeah. be a clock going and then you can sort of yeah right, step yeah, outside yeah, of it and yeah. come back to varying degrees of accuracy <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah um or but like that accurate it, it, with terms like this like like the 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 groove that happens is the right one and our abstract notion of of metronomic is yeah is a projection yeah, that yeah, isn't yeah. correct you know like yeah. like swing music isn't out of time yeah. <laughs> wonky grooves like dilla grooves aren't out of time yeah, like yeah. the grid is out of time relative to those you know yeah so it's 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 some of the that kind of conceptual stuff we, we project a little hard on that but yeah it, it, it's it's an interesting one and even with that one like there are certain contexts where you're playing quite tightly metronomic together and then you step out and then try to come back dead on and there's like a, that's an aesthetic and a vibe yes yeah, and then yeah. there's times where like you do this and you come back and there's like a wiggle <laughs> and which is also a vibe and they're both appropriate for different i'm better at the wiggle more. yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> i mean both are hard you know yeah, but yeah, like yeah. they're the and if you're practicing a specific kind of thing the first one it can be harder mm -hmm. to like have a clock time to be yeah. perfect but i think uh, musically both are difficult because yeah. they're they're yeah they're different things um, fast is not good, you know, like, like there's a, what accurate means or what musically good means. It's not always technicality, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. You want to do some Dilla? Dilla yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's play some more. Yeah. I can't do Dilla grooves. No. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, I'm just saying that now. <laughs> we'll see about that. <laughs>
If you'd like to support the making of these videos, please join our Patreon. The link is in the description below. Thanks for watching.